The Pittsburgh Steelers got the run game on track last week against the Denver Broncos. Now they got to do it again this week against the Seattle Seahawks in a game on Sunday night football that I think favors them in a lot of ways, not just because Russell Wilson is playing, but because of what the Steelers are doing on the ground game. Joining me to talk about that is Jenna Harner from Channel 11 WPXI. We will be breaking that matchup down for you, along with other key matchups in this game. And, of course, all of our week six picks in the NFL season right here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things on the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find this show on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Odyssey. If you're, if you're watching this show on YouTube, please like the video, subscribe to, to our channel. You get all of our view, videos Monday through Friday, as well as any other updates we have. Joining me today is Jenna Harner, our, our all-time friend on Fridays. Jenna Harner of Channel WPXI. Jenna, how you doing? I am doing absolutely wonderfully. It is so great to be here. It's also a little yellow in this room, so I apologize for the uh, <laughs> odd lighting. But you know, hey, we're uh, we're doing it on a Friday. We're back. That, that's fine. We're back here on a Friday, doing it again. Now, I wanna I wanna give our shout outs on our on our picks here. Uh, we had some uh, new winners, I believe. We had uh, R N Eason six and Hem 092 and Steelers Fanatic Universe Cooper and Rushman. All of them. Uh, coming up atop the week five rankings. Uh, we got Dozer 21 currently in first place here uh, for the uh, for the all time picks here. Uh, Jenna, um, looking looking at our situation right now, um, I'm trying to I'm trying to pull up our numbers here because I'm seeing a lot of Steelers fans, uh, fans of this podcast picking uh, uh, picking uh, uh, better than us right now. I think that's the problem Ooh. that I've been having here. Uh, currently, you are, I believe. Uh, you were 44 and 19 or 45 and 19, excuse me. Um, and then, uh, I am right behind you at 44. So I'm, you're, you're a game up on me right now. So we'll get to one our game. Picks. one game, one game. This like, it came down to that last year in the picture. Remember you could join our run your pool picks by joining, by clicking the link in the YouTube subscription. The winner of the entire season gets a day stay Steelers Jersey of their choice from runyourpool.com. But let's get to the matchup at hand. The Steelers are taking on the Seattle Seahawks. We all know Geno Smith is playing for Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson out for a month. That's a big advantage to the Steelers. But there's another advantage that I think is just there. It was going to be there regardless if Russell Wilson played or not, Jenna. And it's the fact that the Steelers are finding their ground game. Now, I know some people out there are like, it's just one game, Chris. Calm down. You're getting way too hyped. But the fact of the matter is, Jenna, they ran over a Denver defense that was the fifth best rushing defense in the NFL. They had 122 yards with just Najee Harris. Um, he looked like he was getting busy. Aditi Kinkabwala pointed out earlier in the week that he was, you know, he was getting contacted behind the line of scrimmage, you know, at a considerable rate in this game. It dropped to 17% of his runs. Um, and also that's with him making more tackles miss. This has been a very impressive performance. And, when you look at these early games here, Jenna, the teams that they played, when we look at total rushing yards allowed so far, the Bills, fourth best rushing defense in the NFL right now. The Broncos, right now, they're seventh best after, after what the Steelers did to them last week. The Steelers themselves are the 10th best rushing defense, but the Bengals and the Packers are, are each of them the 11th and then 12th rushing defenses in the NFL right now. So, with those opportunities, with, with up, up against those opponents, the Steelers have been figuring out their ground game. They did what they did to uh, the Broncos. I also thought they were getting good traction against the Packers. It's just they couldn't run the ball when Aaron Rodgers took over. But now they play the Seattle Seahawks, who going into this week are the second worst run defense in the NFL. They've given up 726 rushing yards. The only team worse than that is the Chargers right now. Jenna, what did you see from last week that made the Steelers' run game that much better? Well, I think it's kind of what we've been talking about for so long is that it was going to take time for this group to gel when you have mm -hmm. as many new pieces as they did, not to mention two of those new pieces being rookies. 
we talked about this. You weren't going to snap your fingers and, you know, game one, they were going to come out ready to go. Game two, they weren't going to come out ready to go. It was a learning process. We heard Ben Roethlisberger talk time and time again at the beginning of the season through training camp and even through the first couple weeks. There's going to be growing pains. And we saw those growing pains. And now they're starting to figure things out a little bit. We're seeing guys really be key on their assignments. You know, you heard Najee talk after the game on Sunday when they beat the Broncos just about how excited he is that they're all finding consistency, that they're really starting to gel. And he sits down and he watches film with them. He says he's in a lot of their meetings you know, with the offensive line, which I don't entirely know how common that is. I'd like to assume that it's decently common, but from the way that Najee explained it after the game on Sunday, he was really hyped about, you know, yeah, I'm seeing, you know, I'm giving them perspective on what, you know, they might from, hold on, let me refresh this. He's giving (laughs) them perspective um, for things that he might see that they might not entirely pick up when they all watch film together. So any type of conversation like that is absolutely huge, but I really think that you're seeing this group kind of slowly start to piece things together. It helps when this is one of the few times the Steelers have had a lead to play with. And so they're able to go out and they're able to run the ball. And we heard Ben talk about it as well after the game on Sunday, how, you know, first downs, they were getting three, four, five, six yards on first down. And so they were staying ahead of the sticks a lot of the time Mm -hmm. and really were able to say, all right, on second down, we're going to run the ball knowing maybe we'll put ourselves in a situation where it's third and one, third and two versus a third and eight, third and nine. That's the that's you're right. That's exactly what Mike Mike Tomlin uh, said after the game last week. Yeah. That's where I think that they're looking at and and they want to like listen. This is not an offense where you can just chuck it up to Antonio Brown anymore and say oh 13 yards no problem he's he's gonna get, go get that for us. Uh, this is an offense that needs to win consistently throughout a drive. And he's like hey went on first down went on second down then it makes it easier to win on third down and that's what they did against the Broncos and the Broncos are still a good defense. I, I know that some people are, are poo pooing them because the Steelers beat them now but. That this is a this is a, that was a good win for the Steelers offense, not just the whole team, but the Steelers offense to put up the numbers that it did in that game. And now you face a Seattle defense that really doesn't know who it is right now. You know, this isn't the the, the Legion of Boom days anymore, where they got Richard Sherman and Earl Thomas and Kyle Ch- Camp Chancellor flying all over the place. You know, Bobby Wagner's still there, still a bad man. Uh, but this is a defensive front that can be taken advantage of. And if you want a game on national television. And at Heinz Field, your first night game of the season with all the new faces in the offensive line, all you know, and and the new face of Najee Harris, this would be a statement game for the run game to show up, bulldoze some people, and kind of say, "Oh, wait a minute, maybe the Steelers' run game is figuring itself out." I, I think it could be something that kind of puts the tape out there for a lot of future opponents. That's like we can't just consider the Steelers a short passing team anymore. And you're seeing these guys get confidence. I think that's the biggest thing is obviously a guy like Najee Harris, a guy like Kendrick Green, Dan Moore Jr., they come into this game with a lot of confidence as a rookie. But when things aren't going your way, when things are frustrating, you tend to question some things and say, oh, well, maybe do I have to do this? Am I doing too much in this area versus this? Where games like you know, the way that they played against the Packers and then the way that they really came together and established, you know, dominated the battles in the trenches against the Broncos, that builds a lot of confidence for these guys. That's something that they say, hey, this is what we did well. This is how we did it. And this is how we can kind of continue to improve on it and build on it. That was something after the game, Trey Turner, I really heard him, you know, he was so excited about, you know, okay, if things are going well, stay the course, keep pushing, keep pushing. If they aren't going well, look at what's going wrong. How do we fix it? How do we work it? But at the end of the day, you went one and oh, it's on a next week. You just have to keep moving and build upon what we were able to do. So it's a really good foundation. And it also gives those guys like Najee Harris, like Dan Moore Jr. And like Kendrick Green, a lot of confidence moving forward to say, hey, you know, we are finding our stride here. We can continue Mm -hmm. to push here. That's I agree. This is this this is what they need to do. They need to find their stride in this game, uh, and this would be a heck of an opportunity to do it do it to against a team like the Seahawks. Uh, and again, with Russell without Russell Wilson, if the defense plays to its capabilities, if it limits Geno Smith, if it limits, limits that offense on the other side of the ball. Take D, make DK Metcalf irrelevant. This could give them a lot of time in this game to say they come out and they do struggle. There's some mistakes and some miscues that the Seahawks jump all over. If the Steelers defense keeps their the, the Seahawks offense in check, the, the run game might have plenty of time to get itself 
itself figured out. And then even if it does have those big plays, maybe you are seeing in the third and fourth quarter a, a considerable lead had by the Steelers. And then maybe you're saying, all right, Najee Harris, you got some cramps last week when we were running you a lot. Let's get in some Benny Snell. Maybe Anthony, you know, maybe Anthony McFarland's back by the by the you know by the by the game. But you know, maybe there's some options there. There's some things that you could look at with this game. So definitely a big consideration. We'll get to more matchups in this game in just a little bit. But first, I got to tell you guys about Bet Online. It's that time of the year again, and all eyes are now turning to football with teams back on the gridiron. It's well into the football season, which means every week you get big bets, both in college and in pro football action. And the best place to do that is the number one betting place, and that's Bet Online. With a new updated site and interface, there are more odds, props, and contests available every week. Bet Online continues to be your number one source for everything football. Check out the new odds for who's going to win NFL MVP. You can find your, one, your your way to make easy money by picking your favorite player who's doing it in the NFL right now. Head to the website or on your or use your mobile device to sign up today and you and you get to receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit by going and using the promo code locked on. That's L O C K E D O N locked on and you'll receive your 50% welcome bonus. Don't forget when you go to bet online it's the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports from football to basketball to boxing right down to horse racing don't wait to take advantage of all the great offers available for the 2021 season at bet online where the game starts back here on the locked on steelers podcast i'm your host chris carter We're here with jenna harner keeping it real with you on a friday jenna like i said you are now one game up in our picks congratulations thank you thank you don't don't think it's gonna last long though because i'm coming for you this week i know i know i'm just gonna slowly build on my lead and continue to work on <laughs> what i've been working on and just okay, keep, okay. keep thinking that keep thinking that we'll see how that goes um but as always we skip the thursday night game because it's the friday show so you know we're you know we're we're, we're not talking about that but Going into Friday, we got another game in London, 9.30 kickoff. It's the Dolphins at the Jaguars. I mean, geez, the NFL continues to give just these horrid games uh, across the sea, across the ocean. I'm just like, man, like, like, are you trying to say, yeah, England, you don't want this product? Because Dolphins at Jaguars does not inspire anybody. Listen, I plan to have a fun Saturday night myself this this up this, this weekend. So uh, I'm not so sure I'm going to be awake for 9.30 to watch this game. <laughs> But even so, I'm going with the Dolphins. I'm sorry. The Dolphins may stink, but the Jaguars are just a hot mess under Urban Meyer. I completely agree. I'm going with the Dolphins. Also encouraging news for Tua Tagovailoa. It seems like he's starting to work his way back into practice this week. Does that mean by any means he's going to play? That's one of those things we're going to have to wait and see. But I think that right there is just encouraging for the team as a whole that, hey, they might be getting their starter back sooner than a lot of people thought. And that could really bode well for them. But this is just a... Uh, Yikes. This is I, I want to say I'm more intrigued to watch this one though than I was to watch Jets Falcons. <laughs> I just, I mean, give me like two bad teams. You know something crazy is gonna happen. There's gonna be like a crazy scoop and score. One of those things is just bound to happen in this game. This is just like the punishment. Like you, you did something wrong in life, and now you have to watch Dolphins and Jaguars <laughs> and Jets and Falcons. Like you like like you obviously this is just payment back for 1776. That's what you get England yes. for trying to own the US. Uh, but okay, now a really interesting game at one o'clock. A game that I think a lot of Steelers fans will be paying attention to. The Los Angeles Chargers at 4-1 and one, coming off some big wins. They beat the Browns last week. Now they face the Ravens in Baltimore. Jenna, with the with the, ra- with the Ravens, the way they've been playing, I, I think that they, they pose a serious echo. The Chargers are the worst run defense in the NFL right now. And, of course, against Lamar Jackson in that offense, you have to consider that as a threat. But Justin Herbert has been phenomenal, and that's who I'm going with. I think that this is going to be a light up the scoreboard type of game and the Chargers come out on top yet again. Yeah, this is going to be a shootout, no doubt about it, just because of the matchups you have Lamar Jackson going against the Chargers run defense. But again, Justin Herbert has been playing out of his mind. It's been so fun to watch him because I know a ton of people, a lot of look at it as, you know, oh, it's a rookie um, in his, or, you know, in his second year. So his sophomore year after his rookie year, people look at him and say, oh, there's usually a step backwards. There's kind of the sophomore slump and he surpassed that so much. He's so fun to watch. I feel like I said this verbatim last week, but I think this is going to be a really fun shootout type game, but I do think the chargers win this one. 
It's going to be a good one. Uh, an interesting game, the two and three Vikings at the three and two Panthers. Uh, Vikings found have found a way to sneak their way into two wins, but have also found a way to lose three three games that have been really tough. The Panthers are another team I can't figure out. Like one week they're looking really good, one week they're not looking really good. I'm going to go with the Panthers just because I think they have a better defense than the Vikings, but this to me is a very much a coin flip pick here. Yeah, this I think the line as of us taping the show is what, one and a half in, ter- in favor – what? Am I, I said pick? sheesh. Oh, I thought I was getting shushed there for a second. I was no, like, I don't want to shush you on your pick. I mean, no, I'm saying sheesh. Like, geez, oh, that's yes. a line. Woo. Okay. There well, we go. Saying, I'm like, I'm like, did, did Jenna just think I shushed her? Like, no, I'm not saying that. Sheesh. <laughs> Anyways, continue with your pick. I was like, am I reading the wrong odds here? What's going on? <laughs> All righty. So it's a one and a half odds. Uh, I just, I mean, again, this definitely feels like a coin flip to me, but I will go Carolina just because, again, I think McCaffrey is progressing to come back, if I believe. Again, we have to wait and kind of see till the way the week shakes out fully and the full injury reports come out. But Anytime you have potentially he's back in the lineup, obviously it's such a game changer. And I think the Vikings are just too inconsistent this year. Yeah, I'm right with you. They're, they're too hard to predict. And when you're too hard to predict with that against the team, the Panthers have been easy to predict, but they've at least pr- produced some consistent things on defense that I'll take. NFC North showdown, one o'clock in Chicago. Packers at Bears. I'm going with the Pack. I know the Bears, they they beat the Raiders. They did their, what they were supposed to do there. But uh, Packers, uh, I, they're not. They, that's not Derek Carr you're going up against this time. No, obviously Aaron Rodgers continuing to build on what he's done. And I think that they had a really emotional win. That win against the Bengals was so fantastic in Mm -hmm. so many ways for that Green Bay team, especially when you have a guy like Mason Crosby who doesn't miss for anything and missed three straight only to go on to win it in overtime. I think that kind of gives your team a big boost. And they know that they have to kind of keep putting themselves in good positions. Obviously, that seems like every team. But I just think right now this seems to kind of bode well in Green Bay favor granted i do think chicago has a lot of momentum coming off that win against the raiders but i just think green bay right now is a more complete team offensively yeah same here now this next game is a little interesting it's the bengals at the lions bengals three and two coming off that tough loss to the packers lions zero and five can't find any answers they're biting at kneecaps and it's not working jenna um but i'm gonna I'm going to go with the Bengals. Part of me wants to think that this is going to be a weird game where the, the, the Bengals are reeling after their tough loss and that the Lions find a way to win this game. But I'm sticking with the Bengals. I think that they have it in them to oust a team that just can't find answers. But do you think this is a, a game where the Lions pull off their first win of the season? This is a really interesting one because I think the circumstances could bode that way. It's one of those like gut feelings where you're just kind of like, eh, like this could be a game the Lions win. But just with going back to that gut feeling, I can't pick against the Bengals right now because they are playing pretty solid football. I don't <laughs> they think are. people expected that, even though if you look at what their body of work is, I mean, again, all I have to say, Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, the two seem to be picking right up where they left off after their national championship at LSU in 2019. And just, you know, Burrow keeps finding Chase, keeps making big plays, keeps growing. I think they're a young team that's looking pretty solid, honestly. So I just think that this is something where they kind of come off this emotional loss and say, hey, we're going to go take care of business. We're going to go beat this team. We're not going to let down against a mediocre Lions team. And I think the Bengals do win. Now, here's an interesting game. AFC South matchup. The Texans at the Colts. I'm going with the Colts because I'm sorry. As long as Davis Mills is in at quarterback with the Texans, I don't believe in anything they can do. I know that they almost took the Patriots. That almost cost me last week. But the Colts, they've been bad. But they they can they can win this game at home. I think so too. I think the Texans are just kind of a little bit of a dumpster fire to put yeah. things nicely right now, unfortunately. Um, and again, you can say almost as much as you want. They almost beat the Patriots. They almost did this, but at the end of the day, they didn't. They gave up. I feel like they handed the Patriots pretty much every chance they could to stay in the game. And that is one of those kind of soul crushing moments where it's a little bit hard to bounce back from versus you know, the Bengals bouncing back from a couple missed kicks type thing. So I think, yeah, I'm going with uh, the in the Colts in this one just because of, you know, where they are right now. And I, I just don't think the Texans have a lot to build on. Move along here. We got your New York football giants at one and four hosting the Los Angeles Rams at four and one. This is a yikes. This might be my my survivor pick of the week. I think I'm going to be taking the Rams. Uh, I know you're your Giants. I know you're your G-Man, Jenna, but I think they're about to get stomped. Is Saquon Barkley not playing this week? It's going to be a rough one. 
Yeah, it's just not looking good for the Giants, especially losing Daniel Jones to a concussion. And that too, I uh, forgot about Daniel Jones. Game, so he's going through the concussion protocol. I hate to say this this way again, as a Giants fan, I can say this, but when you have Saquon and Daniel Jones and Kenny Galladay on the field, and you're not winning a lot of games, what are you going to do when two, at least two, if not all three of them, are not in the game? Yeah. That's going to be a rough one. And the Rams are just one of the best teams in football right now, as yeah. they've shown through five games. But uh, but let's get to an, uh, our final one o'clock game here. Chiefs at Washington football team. Chiefs are two and three. Same record as the Pittsburgh Steelers on the struggle bus. And they've had some rough times. But I'm sorry. I don't see any way they lose this game. I think they bounce back for sure. Patrick Mahomes. I know that Washington has a better defense than, than some people think. But they're, he's going to light it up. And I know the Chiefs' defense has struggled, but they're going to do just enough to win this game, even if Taylor Heineke has a fantastic game going Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I think especially after the way they lost on Sunday Night Football, I believe that was like triple the amount that Patrick Mahomes has ever lost at home as a Chief. I think the most up to that point was seven, um, which during the regular season. And so, I mean, again, I think everyone looked at this too. Is like the Bills are a big contender, no doubt about it. They answered a lot of questions, but it's not like the Chiefs are a bad team by any means. Their secondary is struggling a little bit, and the Bills were able to expose that on Sunday night. But I really just think that this is a good bounce back game for the Chiefs. I think Mahomes goes out there, lights it up a little bit, kind of get their feet back under them, and they get back to 500. This is probably the game every every Steelers fan is going to be watching at four o'clock. It's the Cardinals five and zero at the Browns three and two. Cardinals, the last undefeated team in football. Kyler Murray playing out of his mind, but he's also got complimentary football coming from all sides here. JJ Watt in that defense making plays, um, you know, and he's got several playmakers on offense. The Browns now with two heartbreaker losses, where at the end of the game they just needed one drive from Baker Mayfield and he just couldn't do it. I'm picking the Cardinals. I just, again, you know me, Jenna. I'm not a Baker Mayfield believer. I, I just don't no. see it. If when everything's going in his favor, when the run game's working, and no one can can tell if it's going to be a pass or not, he's fine. He's a he's a decent quarterback in those moments. But when I'm as a defensive coordinator to predict where he's that, that that he is just going to drop back and throw the ball, he is not a threat. Like he, he is he is a guy that you that you can beat that way. I think the Cardinals' offense is going to be good enough to put up points in the Browns that Baker Mayfield will have to step out and make big plays in situations where the run will not be a factor. And if that happens, I'm going. I think the Cardinals win this one. Yeah, I'm just looking at this as a matchup of the quarterbacks, and I'm taking Kyler Murray over Baker Mayfield any day right now. It's night and day between the two, and it's not like Baker is playing tremendously terrible to the point where it's insanely noticeable but again he's not making a lot of the routine plays that you expect him to make he especially I didn't really obviously because of the Steelers game didn't catch much of the Browns game this past weekend but when I saw them play against the Vikings he did not do a lot to impress he did not look fantastic and I think again there's parity in the NFL so of course you know how you're sticking around every team game plans for each other all of that stuff of course but I really just see this as the Cardinals have the better quarterback in this game and I think they should win. AFC West showdown 3 and 2 Raiders at 3 and 2 Broncos. Broncos of course were 3 and 1 before they played the Steelers. Uh Raiders themselves coming off a tough loss to the Bears. Uh Khalil Mack was getting after him last week. Now you face Vaughn Miller who's used to going up against you. Uh, the Raiders also dealing with the John Gruden situation. There's some drama there to be considered to, to, to consider there. But um, this is a tough one for me, Jenna. I'm going to stick with the Raiders because I think they just have a better roster. Derek Carr, uh, you know, Josh Jacobs, still a bad man. Um, you, you still got some, some receivers to hit. You still got Darren Waller. You still got that defense with a couple play, players on it. But I would not be surprised if the Broncos won at home. What say you? This might be, I think, our first difference of the week. Ah, there we go. I like it. I like it. I'm going with the Broncos only because of something I heard in the press box on Sunday when they were playing the Steelers from a couple of the Denver beat reporters talking. They said, man, Teddy Bridgewater looks exactly like what you thought he would look like. A guy coming out of concussion protocol who's had only a few days of practice. He looked good up for the first games of the season before he got that concussion. And he, you saw him work his way back into the Steelers game. Obviously, he clearly wasn't at entirely 100%, but I think this week of practice will do him well. We saw what they did at the end of this at the end of the game against the Steelers. Quick drives, they were able to piece things together, you know, move things down the field, had a chance to tie 
you know, potentially at the end there. Um, I just think that they're going to build on that, but also this is going to be a tough one. This is, this is a game that I really could see going either way, but I'm just going with the Broncos for, for this. Oh, that, okay. Okay. There's our first split. I don't think this will be a split though. Another four o'clocker Cowboys at Patriots four and one at two and three. Sorry. The Cowboys are just, they're, they're, they're walking through these Patriots and the, 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 the Patriots, they're, you know, they're figuring things out with Mac Jones, but it won't be enough. Ezekiel Elliott, Dak Prescott, Amari Cooper, CD lamb. They're there. This is going to be a barn burner for the Cowboys offense. Yeah, the Patriots have a ton of question marks for things that they need to figure out. And obviously coming back to win that game against the Texans, but the fact that the Texans were kicking their butts at one point in the game, that is not a great look. It's Bill Belichick. He'll figure things out. They're not dead completely by any means, but I just don't see this being a game the Patriots win. I'm right with you. I think that the Patriots just struggle too much there. Final game on our pick slates before we get back to the Steelers game. Four and one Bills at three and two Titans. Mon- Monday night football. The Bills are the best team in football for me outside. The Cardinals, I think, you know, put, they'll, 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 those teams will be head neck and neck for a while. But the Bills are playing extremely consistent on both sides of the ball. I'm giving them a win easily in this one. I think the Bills, absolutely. The statement they went out and made on Sunday Night Football, I think, speaks for what the what they have as a whole complete body of work. That is a complete football team, offensively, defensively, special teams. And I think that that win really proved a lot to them, you know, just kind of seeing a lot of my former co-workers and beat writers and stuff talk about what a win like that meant to the team. That is just something I think they're to build on. The Titans still trying to figure some things out. I just think the Bills roll here. I'm right with you. The Bills, I mean, they're playing really good football. I think Josh Allen's playing really good football. I mean, the, the MVP considerations for him are, consi- are, are, are considerable. I, you know, I think he'd be a good bet. So go back to bet online uh, and, and place your bet on Josh Allen for NFL MVP. I really think that he stands a good chance at, uh, at, at, win- at winning that. But, uh, Jenna, there's a lot of things to consider. Of course, the Steelers game. we got to give our picks on that. We'll do that in just a bit here. But first, got to tell you guys about Built Bar. If you want a healthy treat that tastes like a candy bar, uh, you got to get, get Built Bar. It's the protein bar for you. It's the, also the official protein bar of the U.S. track and field team, and it comes in so many different flavors. Whether you want a fruity snack like raspberry, strawberry, or orange, or something different like salted caramel, cookies and cream, Rocky Road, or, you know, real cookie dough. It's a fire flavor. I go with it all the time. I love it. And it's also what makes it a, such a great snack is that it's very light on you. It impacts, it impacts on only 130 to 180 calories, so you're not crushing yourself and ruining your diet in the day. But you get 17 to 18 grams of protein. That's the uh, that's the kind of protein snack that really helps you out. And also, only four to five grams of sugar, only four to five grams of net carbs. So you're not taking in a whole bunch of bad stuff into your body. That's a, a tasty and healthy snack that'll save you from eating the snacks you'll regret later and help you stay on task with anyone's diet. Order today and get your favorite flavor delivered right to your door by going to built.com and use promo code LOCKED15. That's L O C K E D 1 5, LOCKED15 for 15% off on your next order at built.com. Again, LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Wrapping things up here on the Lockdown Steelers podcast. I'm Chris Carter here with Jenna Harner, breaking things down on the Steelers-Seahawks game, Sunday night football at Heinz Field. Just a heads up, I won't be there. This is my first Steelers game I haven't been able to miss. I'm at, I'm, I'll be out of town in New York for a wedding, so I wasn't able to get back for it. But Jenna, I believe you will be in the press box at Heinz Field. I will, and this is actually a game on Channel 11, little uh, promotion here. There you go. So definitely uh, tune in. We'll have a live pregame show an hour before, um, and then a live postgame show immediately after NBC hands off the coverage to us. So definitely got a lot of really cool stories ahead, so for sure tune in. But this should be a fun one. It should be a really fun one. It, it should be it should be a game that I think everyone's going to be tuning into. Um, even again, even without Russell Wilson, these are two teams that you know they have they have they've had recent success. These are two two franchises that they've had some history together. You know the Steelers beat the Seahawks in the uh, in the Super Bowl back in Super Bowl forty. Um, you know there's you know there's a lot of things that go into that, but also you know the the Seahawks they were the team that that you know that, that was Ben's last game before he went out for uh for uh, you know for the season with a surgery on his elbow in 2019 um and that was also at Heinz Field so uh you know that's uh there, there's a lot of interesting history with this game but when I look at this game and we got to talk about matchups because you always you know throw out the intangibles throw out Pete Carroll versus Mike Tomlin and all this other stuff I look at what are you doing as far as you know, you know, what are you doing to, to neutralize or minimize another team's strengths? What are you doing to maximize your own strengths? And right now, when I look at this at the, at this Seahawks team, 
I start to look at and say, okay, what what are you really scared of here? Because Geno Smith did come in and throw a touchdown to DK Metcalf, but you know, I think he caught the I think he caught the other team a little bit surprised by surprise last uh, last week. Now the Steelers are going to be able to prepare for him. They're going to be able to, to line up. They can be aggressive. Uh, I think that the, they can they can really get after the run and stop the stuff that too. It will depend on who all is healthy for this game. But by and large, I think that this this favors them. I think the biggest thing that Steelers can do is stuff the run, just win in the box, stuff the run and yep. hit geno smith and just hit the quarterback you do that the seahawks will never even be able to get started and then however long it takes the C, the, the the steelers offense to get started your defense will keep them on lock yeah i think my biggest matchup is just going to be getting out to a quick start and playing with a mm. lead because that is something that gives the offense in particular a whole lot of confidence we go back to talking about that but Ben's able to find his guys, which we saw him do to Deontay the last two weeks. That allows the run game to get going. That allows the defense to play with a lead. It's just kind of like one of those domino effect type things that you don't have to score in the first drive. Obviously, the last two weeks from what we've seen, it's nice and it's, you know, puts them in a position to have success. But if they can kind of what we were talking about a little bit before and what a lot of the guys reiterated after the game, if they can kind of get consistency, pick up four, five yards on first down and yep. make those third down situations manageable, you're giving yourself a whole lot more options in the offense to really be able to do more things and really to be able to take more deep shots downfield. We saw what Ben was able to do in terms of finding Chase Claypool throughout the afternoon Sunday against the Broncos. And I think that really could bode in their success. So it's, can they play with a lead? Can they maintain it? Because not only will you allow your defense to be able to do more, but it gives your offense a whole lot of confidence. That was such a point of contention for basically almost every game leading into Sunday against the Broncos. Certainly a consideration. And it's part of your starting fast comment. We talked in the first segment of this show about running the football against the second worst rushing defense in the NFL. But the Seahawks also have the third worst passing defense in the NFL. Yeah. Overall, this is one of the worst defenses in the league. In fact, they are giving up the most yards per game in the NFL right now. Um, now they're, 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 they're 10th worst in when it comes to points per game. Um, but this is a chance for the Steelers offense to get right. This is the chance yeah. for them to for them to set a tone and say, listen, this is what happens when you underestimate this team. This is what happens when things are clicking for them. And again, this leads right into a bye week. This is the perfect situation for Ben Roethlisberger, Najee Harris, Chase Claypool, Deontay Johnson, but no Juju Smith-Schuster's out for the season. Um, but for this offense and the offensive line to get it together, have some good notes to build on, rest up, get people healthy in the bye week, and then get ready to take on the Cleveland Browns and what will be a major division matchup uh, yeah. that will that, have large implications on this season. So I'm right with you. Starting fast, a big thing here. Get out to a lead so that you can let the big matchup, what I was saying, winning in the box defensively, making sure that you're hitting the quarterback, getting after him on the, on the passing downs, and winning on the early rushing downs. Because eventually, if you're up two scores, it kind of minimizes what the other team even wants to do on the ground. So yeah. big factors there. Jenna, all that being said, what's your final score and prediction for this game? I'm going 27, 17 Steelers. I think they're going to win. I think it's going to be convincing just because again, if they can get out to that quick start, but I think again, with the way that this offense potentially matches up against Seattle's defense, this bodes very well in their favor. I'm intrigued to see Geno Smith's entire body of work. And if, like you said, the Steelers defense can get to him, can pressure him, get a sack or two in there. I think that changes the complexity of this game a lot. I just think that if the Steelers offense can play like they did against Denver, they're going to find a lot of success. I agree with you. I think the Steelers offense is going to is going to have some success in this game. They're going to play to get that lead. They're going to make the big plays. I have this uh, similar score, but a little bit, bit bigger of a margin. I'm going 31 13. I think the Steelers put up a good amount of touchdowns, might even get a defensive touchdown in this game. I think that there's going to be some good amount of scoring, but you're going to see that run game take over, eat a lot of clock. And I think you see that I think you see the Seahawks a touchdown here, field goal there. But by and large, this is going to be a Steelers controlled game that gets them the W in a big way and gets them back to three and three after the one and three start heading into the bye week to get some rest and get ready to take on their division rival, the Cleveland Browns. So there you have it. Uh, Jenna, 
I believe our only split is Raiders Broncos this week. So I need Woo! to I, I need the Raiders to come through for me so I can tie with you uh, going into next week. So we'll see how that goes. But Jenna, as always, thanks for joining me on a on a fun Friday, getting y'all ready for the for the Steelers weekend. Let people know they can find you, follow you, and get more of your work. Well, thank you so much for having me, as always. It's always a pleasure to be here on Fridays. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Jenna Harner 11, Instagram, Jenna underscore Harner, uh, WPXI Channel 11. Again, this Sunday night game on NBC right on Channel 11. So we have all of the coverage that you guys tune in for. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. Really some awesome stories ahead. Definitely tune in absolutely tune in to all the great things they do at channel 11 it's always a fun time i'm chris carter you can follow me on twitter and instagram at carter critiques you can watch this show or listen to this show monday through friday getting you ready for your pittsburgh steelers all throughout the week stay tuned we got a lot of great things coming up like i said i will be out of town over the weekend i will be doing my best to put up a sunday evening show well, i guess it will be a monday morning show because it's a sunday night football game so yeah. you probably i probably won't even get up get get a chance to record until pretty pretty early monday morning but i'm gonna do my best to get that show up as fast as possible on my way back and keep things rolling for next week so stay tuned with that remember if you're enjoying the show subscribe to us on youtube you can also like this video on youtube to help us out leave us a five-star rating on apple Podcasts with a positive comment and you is a special shout out at the end of the show thanks to again to everyone who supports us we appreciate y'all we'll be back in your ears monday talking about how the steelers pulled it out or fell short at heinz field on sunday night football <laughs>